around my story. Hello, my name is Kate. Now I'm going to say this. I am by no means a saint. And the only reason I brought this up is later in the story. So, I dated this guy in high school for two years. He was the love of my life, and I planned on marrying him. His dad became super controlling, and eventually he forced us to break up. He immediately got into a relationship with another girl, and I moved on. Later on, I met this guy who um, we will call Max, and he was a mix between country and scene. He liked artists like Lil Peep, and also was in love with horses. He had a girlfriend who lived across the country, but we stayed friends. They eventually broke up, and naturally we both grew closer. Dear God, I regret ever saying yes to going out with him. The first two months, they were constant fighting. He wanted us to visit his ex-girlfriend because she was failing college and addicted to coke while we were together. He would sometimes text her while he was at my house or while we were at dinner, but eventually he quit. The next few months were okay at best. He would constantly start fights with my male friends and even assumed I was cheating on him with one friend who at the time did have a crush on me. But I'm a very loyal person who went as far as to put more of my time into hanging out with my boyfriend than my friends. Eventually we went on a cruise and he got high with a group of girls and kissed one of them. I cut it off and went on to date others. So, he texted me three months after breaking up, saying he wants to talk and apologize for what he did. I was still in love with him, so I agreed and we set up a time for when he could come over. I knew instantly, when he pulled into my driveway, that I was going to regret ever responding. There was no hug, no I miss you, none of that. Instead, he walks up to me, looks me in the eye and says, I want to get this out of the way. I've dated a lot of people since we broke up. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I did the same when we broke up. So, I kind of agreed to being just friends and never go back to talking about getting back together for now. But then comes the bullshit. He calls me one night and says, Hey, I want to get back with you. Because honestly, wandering around is boring and I don't want to jump into things instantly. And I was wondering if dating without labels would be okay with you. When I asked him to elaborate, he replied, as in, I can still go to dinner with other girls, you can go to dinner with other guys, and we'll see what happens. Needless to say, I hung up without saying a word, told him thanks, but no thanks. You are not who you used to be, and I'm not interested anymore. Bonus chapter. He stopped a few weeks, but he would periodically send me pictures of him at parties or on dates with other girls or pictures of his private areas. Anyways, ever since he has been blocked on everything, but I just thought I would share this with you. This is a shout out to every girl out there. Please find someone that's worth your love and affection, not someone who wants to play with it. Hey, my name is Rachel. In high school, the homecoming dance was coming up. I happened to confine that I had a crush on a popular guy to another girl in my class. Unbeknownst to me, they were very, very good friends. And this girl offered to put in a good word for me. The next day, she told me my crush would totally say yes if I asked him. So in between periods, I found my crush in the hallway, asked him to the homecoming dance, and he said yes. Well, homecoming is on Saturday. Today is Thursday. My crush, his friend, and I, we went to lunch together and I offered to pay in the hopes that this will make them like me even more. And yes, I was that bad. They tell me they want two bags of chips, burgers, fries, and two small cartons of chocolate milk? No problem. I go to the cafeteria and get those items like a boss. For some reason, I decided to jog over to them, even though that really only shaves off like, what, 10 minutes from my trip? But I still did it. I had two bags of chips in my mouth, one in my hand with a burger and fries, the other hand with two cartons of chocolate milk. They are sitting in the common area. The common area is carpeted. 
parallel to the cafeteria which had a tile floor. These rooms are separated by a relatively small metal line on the floor. And as I meet that line, my left foot catches on the metal. No problem, I have another foot. I will just swing that foot forward real quick and save this. But no, the other foot also catches. As I fall straight forward, I try to catch myself with my hands. Well, one hand had the chocolate milk in it, which just burst out, sending chocolate milk in every single direction. My other hand didn't help me either. It slipped on the burger in the bag and the fries go all over the place. The last thing to break my fall was actually my own face. The face with two bags of potato chips in my mouth. You know those jokes about chips bags being full of air? Well, they're actually true. As my face collided with the ground, both the bags of chips exploded at the same exact time and it sounded like a gunshot. Somehow one of my shoes just flew off. I tried to melt into the ground and fade out of existence for a moment and this happened at the meeting point of the common room and the cafeteria. So everyone in both rooms either saw or heard this fiasco and looked over. About a hundred students. It's deadly silent for a couple of seconds and then comes the laughter. And dear god the laughter. It was like a jet engine. Every person there was laughing the hardest they have ever laughed in their whole lives. I even saw the janitor doubled over laughing, bracing himself with a mop handle. A teacher was trying to walk over to help me, but she stopped every couple of feet to use her whole body to laugh at me. All of this happens not 10 feet away from the table in which my crush and his friends were sitting. Everyone is having a great laugh, but my crush has the greatest laugh of all. He has fallen to the ground, with one hand bracing himself on his knees. The other hand is clutched at his ribs as he laughs so hard that no sound comes out. He was wheezing like a dolphin. There is no recovery from this. I walk to the bathroom to clean myself up. The teacher could only manage to hand me my shoe along the way and continue laughing. In the bathroom, the laughter did not die at all for what seemed like a lifetime. When the bell rang, I was still in the bathroom and people were still laughing. While I spent the whole day wallowing in easily the most embarrassing moment of my life, I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'm just a funny girl and he will like it. The next morning, I see my crush before class and he walks up to me and he says, so homecoming is tomorrow. Eager not to speak about the shit show that happened yesterday, I just excitedly said, yes, yes it is. And then he delivers a crisp. And says, um, so this girl that I actually like asked me to go to the dance with her, so I think I'm gonna go. To which I replied, um, ah, yeah, that makes sense. I totally did not go in the bathroom and cry after that. Anyways, my crush said he will go to homecoming with me. The day before, I tripped with his lunch and face planted into a pool of random ingredients in front of the entire class. My crush did not go to the homecoming dance with me. My name is Keanu, and I'm 13 years old. I am a psychopath. I freely admit it in front of all of you. I attribute my sickness solely to my father, because any story about a cruel father pales in comparison to my father. He would abuse me physically, mentally, verbally, and emotionally in every given moment. He left no stone unturned in this regard. He would beat me into unconsciousness. He accused me of being the cause of my mother's death, who died during my childbirth. Whenever dad had any problem at home, he would accuse me of being the cause of it. One time he even beat me at school when my teacher called him to school because I had beat up my classmate who had beaten me up first. I tried to explain to him, but he wouldn't listen and he just beat me even more. One day, it was fun day at school and everyone was supposed to invite their parents to visit the school for party and introduction activities. I chose not to invite my dad, so I was alone at the festivities. I felt envious of all my classmates for having loving parents to have fun with. My teacher noticed me alone, 
came over and offered to be my parent for the day. I was so happy. We had great fun together. Miss Linda had lost both her husband and her son in a plane crash. Only, she had survived. After fun day had passed, Miss Linda showed more interest in me. She would bring me sandwiches and spend time with me during breaks. I thought of her as my mom. When I succeeded in my final exams, she hugged me with tears of joy. I unconsciously said, Thanks, Mom. I went home happy that day, but had to face my dad again. He asked me why I was late coming home, and I told him about having to pass my final exams. He didn't believe me, though, and asked me to show him proof. Unfortunately, I had none, so he began kicking and punching me. There was a knock on the door. He tried to block me from opening the door, but I managed to open it. Miss Linda was standing there. She glanced at my bruises and bloody face and moved between me and my dad to protect me from further abuse. Dad snarled and threatened her with a beating if she didn't leave immediately. But she hit him in the eyes with a blast of mace or pepper spray, and he went down to the floor in extreme discomfort, grabbing at his eyes. Miss Linda